Welcome to the Leadership Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Jono White. I'm the founder and principal consultant of Clarity. We are an Australian-based consultancy that works with leaders around the world, and our passion is to invest in people to become everything they're meant to be in order to fill the world with healthy organizations that people love to work for and customers line up to buy from. The goal of this podcast is to invest in you and your leadership. If you're just joining us for the first time, then feel free to check out consultclarity.org. That's our website, consultclarity.org. We have so many free resources on there. The most popular being our seven questions on leadership series. We've had more than 1,500 leaders from around the world in all different sectors give their in-depth answers on leadership, what books they love, what they found most challenging, uh, the most meaningful stories, how they, how they structure their time through the day. That's free, so go and check it out. And we'd love to interview you about your leadership. I believe you have advice from your experience, your context, and your life so far that is important and can help other leaders. It's also a great way to give back. It's free to get involved, and you can do so by going to consultclarity.org forward slash seven dash questions dash interest, or just Google consultclarity.org seven questions interest and fill out the form that pops up. We have a free resource for you on our website. It's called Leadership Survival Guide. It's a 57 page ebook. It has interviews with 10 world class leaders, and you can go to consultclarity.org. It's right at the top and get that today. Uh, we also have a daily email that we send out to over 15,000 leaders, and that email contains the highlights, our best content from our podcasts, our blog, uh, my book, uh, the books that we're loving that are out there about leadership. It's also the best way to get access to our masterclasses and workshops before anyone else. And there's also exclusive and limited uh, special options just for subscribers. And you can subscribe by going to consultclarity.org forward slash subscribe. Now, my gift to you is to work incredibly hard to provide the best leadership content I can to invest in you and your leadership. So if you're finding our content helpful, if you find this podcast helpful, then your gift to me uh, could be this. If you, if you do find it helpful, then write a review or rate our content and make sure you subscribe or follow. I can't emphasize enough how helpful that is. It really does help us to get the word out there so we can invest in more leaders to become everything they're meant to be. It also means a lot to me personally when people like you and people in our community share our content on social media. So if you do that, then please do look for me, Jono White, to tag me and look to tag Clarity uh, on whatever platform you're on. And our team, including me, I'm always looking to see when people have mentioned us so that I can engage with you. And also we look at sharing content. So if you you write something about something we've done, there's also a good chance we'll share that with our followers. So if you could do that, that is a massive, massive help as we try to invest in as many leaders as we can around the world. Last of all, you can check out my book about how to deal with difficult people even if you hate conflict. It's called Step Up or Step Out. It's available on Amazon. You can just look up Step Up or Step Out, John O'White, or you can go to store.consultclarity.org forward slash book and check it out there. I have coached leader after leader after leader, and in more than 50% of the sessions, this topic comes up. How do I deal with this person? I'm finding it really difficult, and, and I just want to find a way that doesn't blow up to do a really, just to have a difficult conversation, to lead them better. How do I do that? There's a three-step process that I outline in this book that I believe can help you. Okay, let's get into today's episode of the Leadership Conversations podcast. Enjoy. Welcome to another episode of the Leadership Conversations podcast. Today's guest is Kevin Skio. Kevin is a partner in Brooks Education Group and is uh, we were just having a chat before we press record and, and very passionate about education, which I share that passion. And that's one of the reasons I'm so excited to have this chat today. Kevin, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, General. Thank you. First of all, can you give everyone, a, all of our listeners, a bit of an overview of who you are and what you do and, and where you're based? 
Ah, yes. Uh, uh, so I'm um, uh, Kevin Skio. I'm um, uh, I'm uh, based in uh, Hertfordshire, uh, uh, England, just outside uh, London. If uh, listeners know, uh, well, many many Australians know uh, London well. Uh, at least they've been over here at some point in their lives. I think uh, I've seen so many. Um, but the uh, we are uh, on a um, uh, um, uh, a beautiful plot of land that is uh, just outside uh, St Albans and. I'm overlooking the Hertfordshire grounds where we have uh, horse stables and all that all around. It's very, very lovely. Uh, but that is not my home, where I came, come from. I was born in Toronto, Canada, and I uh, met my uh, wife before she passed away recently in uh, Toronto, where she had come from, uh, uh, the, I think from the US at any point. Anyways, and she was uh, from a Swiss family and uh, we got married and ended up in Switzerland. And that after, uh, a long short while sort of defines me as a, uh, a Canadian Swiss uh, wanderer of the world <laughs> and I uh, haven't quite tough made it I found a little bit like Odysseus trying to get back home. Um, I've been literally uh, in uh, many, many countries and I'm still uh, I'm still wandering but uh, still haven't uh, found that uh, that road uh, that leads home yet. But uh, that's that's me in a nutshell. Um, Toronto, Canada. Uh, uh, my uh, two two girls in university, um, veterinary and uh, geography. I think it is uh, Edinburgh and uh, Lancaster. And um, uh, yes, yeah, lover of animals and uh, all the all the hobbies that are associated with uh, with horses and uh, photography. But uh, there you have it. That's me. Yeah, well, thank you so much for, for sharing that. A real uh, citizen, uh, I guess, a citizen of the world with traveling around. And and also um, just want to say how sorry I am to, uh, to hear the passing of your wife recently, uh, Kevin. I'm really sorry to hear that. Uh, look, uh, well, you know, uh, uh, she if she were here, uh, breast cancer, uh, if we're, uh, women are listening, I'm no, uh, I'm not someone that uh, knows uh, what to say or how to say it, but uh, sure. do get checked early and uh, make sure that uh, you're on top of things. It is a horrible disease. And uh, don't know, I, I, you know, what they've spent on uh, COVID in the last uh, two years, I think has surpassed what uh, cancer research has received in the last 10. It's a, it's not, it's not, it's not a quote that you can uh, say is uh, absolute, but I, I've heard that and it's been, uh, it's been said, we can kill this uh, uh, disease, but uh, we just need to uh, put the tools and resources together to do that. And uh, I'm yes. just, uh, I'll just pause on that. That's all. Okay. <laughs> No, thank you. I appreciate you sharing that. And uh, some things are, uh, well, that's, that's, I mean, to be, to tell you the truth, that's why I love doing this podcast because leadership, we can chat strategy, we can chat vision, but leaders are people and people leading people. And uh, so I appreciate you yeah, sharing, sharing about that and uh, a very um, important reminder for, for people. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for, thank you for sharing that, Kevin. I appreciate it. As we, uh, I guess, as we look back at your story as a leader of how you ended up doing what you're doing, I'd love to hear some of the story of how you, I, I guess, some of those moments along the way that really shaped you becoming the leader and the person you are today, even back all the way to childhood. So uh, feel free to, to tell us a bit of Kevin's story. <laughs> well, um, uh, Jono, I am, um, I'm actually, uh, uh, even though a partner in an education group, uh, but really I'm a teacher and, uh, uh, I have been uh, uh, fortunate enough in my experiences and in my career early on to have been uh, uh, elevated and moved above, uh, moved forward uh, rather quickly in that I've managed to do most jobs in the profession. And I think if I really had to think back, um, this might get odd. And if there's, a, you know, I don't think any Canadians are listening, but I remember as a kid and I don't uh, probably eight, nine, uh, acting as the teacher in the basement with my neighbors, uh, my friends uh, down the road, uh, you know, from the street next door and the houses around you, uh, the class uh, classmates uh, of that uh, particular uh, lesson and me teaching them you know, on a chalkboard in the basement. I don't know if that had anything to do with the, the profession, but I came out of uh, um, a house of two very uh, high level uh, education, um, uh, high, high, high education um, uh, parents in education. Uh, my father, a recent uh, well, uh, winner of the Governor General's Award for Education in Canada. Wow. Um, so it, it was almost a foregone conclusion that I would end up being a teacher. It was just in the blood, I think. But um, 
I mentioned uh, Switzerland. I, uh, I, I just before that, I um, after university, um, as you do. See, most 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 uh, secondary students uh, wonder, you know, what am I going to do after uh, a secondary education? There's this, you know, big what if in their mind. But it's actually after after your first degree where you start asking, now what? <laughs> I sort of uh, after I've received my um, uh, uh, Bachelor of, of uh, Honors in Art uh, in English Literature and History, I was asking these, this very question and uh, sure enough, the uh, professor of uh, Eastern European Studies pulled me aside and said, there's an opportunity that's come up that you might be interested in. And that was teaching in what was then Czechoslovakia. And it was with a company called Education for Democracy, which I had never heard of. And, and uh, to make a long story short, um, I joined approximately 30 other uh, uh, North Americans, mostly, uh, who went over at the fall of the Soviet Union, which is quite uh, important nowadays to talk about. Um, and I found myself in a town called, well, city, Bratislava, famous uh, city of Bratislava in Slovakia. And I left. Uh, I went into Czechoslovakia uh, and I left Slovakia after the Velvet Revolution. Um, and if that seeded my interest in uh, international education, it was because it was so exciting. Um, the next uh, little bit of uh, the journey brought me to Switzerland, where my uh, wife and I settled for 12 years. And I quickly made my way as a classroom teacher, yeah. um, uh, various positions and became principal very young uh, of a large uh, international school, deputy director in uh, Basel, Switzerland, uh, the Basel International School, uh, Auge it's called. And we, uh, and I, 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 I just, I, I, you know, from manager to principal to direct, deputy director to uh, the head of school, the founding head of school, and now, you know, uh, uh, founding a school specialist, whatever you want to call it. Um, the things that uh, have really sort of signified a, a development on my, uh, journey has probably started when I was young, uh, teaching and listening to my parents at the dinner table talking about uh, what they do, and um, just the the various uh, um, well not, they're not advantages. I'm just really fortunate to be uh, able to see many levels of the profession, which gave me the experiences and tools and uh, capabilities to I guess become successful as a uh, as a leader of schools around the world. And uh, that's where I am today. Uh, there's four of us in Brooks Education Group, plus a funder, and uh, five total. Um, yeah. And we have seven schools around the world. Incredible. Uh, I think what you do is incredible. I, I think it's a very, uh, I think it wouldn't get much more challenging in my, uh, <laughs> in my mind. I can't think of... <laughs> Uh, you know, going to different countries and, and doing what I think is one of the most important things you can do in life, which is uh, to be involved in education. Uh, schools are hard enough, let alone starting schools. Um, so well done. <laughs> I think it's yeah. incredible what you do, Kevin. Oh, um, you don't see all the gray hair. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right. Uh, it's funny actually, because my, my wife, Liz, uh, she's not teaching now, uh, but, um, she used to be a primary school teacher and she had a similar story of how for her, she always, she always knew she wanted to be a teacher. And, and when she was little, uh, she would play schools with her sister and, and do teaching. And it was just, yeah, just what your story reminded me of Liz, how, um, <laughs> how she was sort of even from like a really young age uh always always teaching and educating and 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 just yeah that was that was some of her story well the reason i said you know, uh, two names come to mind uh, i haven't seen them in in eons but uh, you know sheila donovan and eric weiss they were you know they were the the, the pupils of mine I, I don't know if i was strict or what but uh, i remember teaching them and it was it was like a, an old-fashioned school lesson probably down there in the basement but it was so funny because these kids you do silly things but you know i was doing what i saw my parents doing which was yeah uh, you know, in front of kids in the classroom sometimes which is that's probably the most significant thing in my life is to actually be able to go into one of my father's lessons in downtown toronto as a young uh, uh, university student, and he telling me, sit in the back and li just listen. And I, I was just dumbfounded and amazed at how um, in, in his classroom, they were in rapture over what he was talking about. It was just to see that and see the power of uh, um, oration and the power of a, a really good storyteller um, was, was just marvelous. And uh, yeah, my father's a terrific guy. Um, and you know that's the main thing. 
great storyteller. Uh, they make great teachers. Uh, yes. uh, you know, skills and all that are one thing, but if you can weave a story into those skills, you've got them. Yeah. <laughs> well, they make great leaders too. I think storytelling is a big part of leadership because you can sure. communicate so much in a well-told story that can shift how someone thinks and can help someone move past some false beliefs about themselves or limitations from hearing a story that you can't do just by uh, speaking the right, content uh, to someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I, it's, it's hard to talk about leadership, but you know, if, from the point of view, but people do see me or uh, even uh, you, Jonah, as uh, um, uh, leaders in our area. And from that context, you are experienced. And from the uh, experiences, those uh, form stories and connections that people uh, form. And uh, the more connections, you can also, the more relationships and you can relate. And it, it just mm. all fits together. But that's what makes it so interesting is that, you know, if leaders speak well or can engage with people or can connect, it's because they've seen and done a lot and they know many things about uh, people, I think it is really, uh, that we were talking about earlier. People make people, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's all, it's, all it's, it's all pretty simple at the end of the day. Not easy, but simple that uh, whether you're teaching or whether you're leading, it's people on the other side that you're really engaging with. Um, and that doesn't make it any, uh, that doesn't make it any easier, but it is, it, there is a simplicity to it that I think people who succeed in many different areas of life, there's one, one of the things they have in common is that they, they have some element of, of mastery around how they relate to people and build trust with people. And I, I see that with educators too, building trust with your students. Um, that's something I've been told a lot by school leaders, not being an educator myself is that no one can pick up more quickly on how, trustworthy or not a person is like a young person like a student they'll pick up yeah. fast and if you lose oh, yeah. that then that that um you, you sort of lost everything absolutely uh you are uh as a as a <laughs> you know uh, what is it? Uh, young people have the the the, the most um flexible uh, give but also the least and shortest uh, patience when it comes to something that they don't uh, trust or believe they, they can, they can suss you out very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I haven't heard that before. That's brilliant. Um, I want to, I want to ask you about your parents because that obviously, uh, had a really big impact on you as an educator and as a, as an educational leader. Um, so are there any stories that really come to mind of say of your dad, um, or of your mum that that really impacted you. You mentioned that story of sitting in the back of a classroom, but were there any moments that really spring to mind from when you were little or when you were a teenager, where the way they handled something with you or the way they handled something in their own life, or or as a leader where you saw them handle something in, uh, you know, in a in a school setting or something like that, where it really stuck with you, um, and and for some reason it sort of springs to mind. Uh, yes, uh, of course. Um, but uh, to put it into context, and, uh, you know, skills uh, don't really talk about themselves much. But in the case of my dad, uh, my father, Alan, Alan Skio, um, uh, he, he is a amazing man. Um, uh, one of the first, well, so basically the first to be educated in his family. So a lot of that generation uh, wow. would have been, you know, uh, working class, I guess you would say back then, yeah. after we left, uh, after the family left England, 1900, going back, uh, went uh, to Canada, they settle, uh, they, uh, they, they have children, um, my father, first one to go to university and his brother, um, that had a true impact on him and the humanitarian um, uh, uh, context or uh, um, uh, um, ideals that came out of that during that time in, in the 50s. And uh, in early Toronto, but uh, my father has written uh, Jono, uh, Juno, uh, Jono, um, the uh, Discovering Canada series, which uh, in addition to many other series, uh, formed the basis for many Ontario and other provinces of Canada, uh, the history textbooks for schools. Now, this was a, uh, this was a, a massive series uh, yeah. that was uh, through most schools across uh, Canada, I'll even say, and it was written by my father, and uh, there are other texts that were used by uh, by students in high school, uh, written by my father. Hell, I even wrote, I even sat in class in my high school and had my father's textbook. It was sort of funny. Um, <laughs> the, so there's a man who's had a true impact on uh, bringing the history of Canada and history to life and to many uh, uh, children across uh, the country. Now, 
that's one aspect of him. And I mentioned the Governor General Award. Uh, towards the end of his career, he was, uh, you know, highlighted and uh, and uh, uh, given this uh, ma major um, uh, recognition uh, in Canada uh, for teaching. And uh, then there's the story of my father, who is not connected to education, and that is the film prop uh, business, which. Uh, on top of all this great teaching and connection and writing and uh, and doing, um, he's a collector, and I think that's where I get it from as well. But uh, a collector of junk, I would always say as a teenager, Dad, you have so much junk. Get rid of the junk. Anyways, this junk has turned into a gold mine uh, because up at the wow. farm, uh, family farm, all of the uh, um, the junk is now backdrop for a lot of the movies that you see when you. Uh, Sit down in the uh, in the showcase uh, movie house, Odeon, whatever. The uh, backdrop, uh, John, as you know, is junk. <laughs> you don't want you know uh, pristine things always, but the, the junk in the background and also a lot of good stuff in the foreground. Yeah, uh, we, I think we've been a part of forty feature films, uh, forty uh, they call it Hollywood <laughs> North. Wow. So he does that as a props. He's sort of the uh, the props and sets guy of uh, of North Toronto Hollywood, and. Uh, you know, there is a man who connected history, his passion, his interest, collecting and collecting of history and junk in history, <laughs> and has turned into the uh, consultant of historical items in movie sets, which uh, also is uh, the aspect of if you're shooting a scene in, let's say, a context of a period, yeah. know, the junk, so to speak, in the back in the background would have to be from that period. And yeah, he is an expert in that. And uh uh, that is him. And uh, I think memorable quotes, he is the, uh, he's always been the connector. Uh, he's a master of working people and telling a story. And uh, I think when the Governor General Award was given, his speech to the uh, Canadian uh, Parliament at the time was, um, uh, skills was a big issue back uh, in the time uh, when he was being awarded. You know, history was being uh, watered down by becoming just about skills. You went to history for skills, skills lessons in, you know, researching or knowledge learning and uh, you know, all these things. And it, he said it was killing history because uh, the thing that made history so interesting was you had to have a story. And the story is the thing that uh, separates, I think, uh, a great teacher from a good teacher. And a great teacher is able to take uh, their knowledge and pass it on, but they can connect it to kids in a way or people in a way that uh, is is personal and uh, you know that brings that uh, that uh, wow uh, wow factor to uh, to to life. He was he is uh, a, a great storyteller. Um, my mother uh, similarly. Um, there's a great uh, quote uh, you'll find funny. Behind every successful man is a woman smiling. Um, that's my mother. You know, like she is holding the house <laughs> and getting everything organized and doing everything to make him uh, successful because it's all the but the deep down, she is a um, a great uh, teacher herself, yes, and also a, a fantastic uh, uh, homemaker and uh, uh, raising uh, my brother and I over the years. And you know, we are very close as a result. And it's uh, it's my short history. But uh, thanks for asking about that. I never talk about them because we don't talk about ourselves. <laughs> there, that's something. Yeah, Go ahead. I like that. Yeah, the the skiers uh, don't talk about themselves until they come on the Legit Conversations podcast, and then. <laughs> And then I ask them all about themselves. So, uh, no, that's what that's wonderful, Kevin. Very, very, uh, very rich to hear some of those stories, and wonderful to hear a bit about your dad. And and he does sound like a wonderful man. And and uh, I love um, being able to honor that legacy and and honor the influence that so much of what you do now people don't see. You know, it comes from the seeds planted from. And what a remarkable story that he was the first in uh, in his family to be educated, and then went on to really to be just such an incredible educator that's that's mind-blowing yeah yeah although there's i could tell i could go on for hours or you know it, it's it, uh, it's incredible um you know as kids we we were uh I don't know my brother and i on weekends on saturday mornings we were off to the dump the, the town dump now i tell this to my uh my students when i'm uh, with them and you know that's sort of odd, you know, it's you know, why are you going to the town dump? We would go to go and look for things and find things. And we found amazing things, uh, you know, as kids, even, you know, I found a piece of gold even once uh, and uh, we found toys, we found, um, uh, you know, uh, used uh, appliances that we were able to, you know, uh, uh, fix up and, uh, and make work. 
Um, I think our first go-kart came out of the dump. Anyways, the dump is where, you know, people throw stuff out. And it was the old form of, um, uh, I guess, upcycling from the schools, uh, from the skills point of view. But um, the reason I'm saying this is that one day we ended up uh, going to the dump and my father spied inside one of the bins a very large collection of historical books. Now, we uh, were told, put all the books in the van, and we did. And in the end, um, what had happened is that a significant Canadian, uh, uh, I'll just put it, a very significant Canadian uh, passed away, and his family didn't know what to do, and they tossed out most of his um, library, let's say. Anyways, that collection now, General, is in the uh, Historical li uh, Library of uh, Canada in Ottawa as one of the uh, key elements of the, um, you know, the last 200 years in Canada. And it's, it's that sort of thing that nobody knows, but if you didn't have my father roving through the uh, garbage dump and identifying and noticing something important, then it would be missing for everyone else to, uh, to see and have. My brother and I, on the other hand, we uh, still have items from that uh, from that <laughs> time, and I have those memories. But you know, from uh, you know today's day and age, where you've got this sort of you know uh, delicate class, I shouldn't say that. Not all kids are, but um, uh, back then we were um, we were knee deep in in junk and uh, knee deep in uh, in waste, let's say. But we were having <laughs> fun, and uh, <laughs> we were having fun, and we were you know we were doing things and. Uh, you know, I just, I worry today uh, with all this, uh, uh, you know, media and apps and uh, phones, you know, there's a little time for kids to get out and just, you know, get knee deep in the junk and, uh, mm -hmm. and waste it uh, and see and do, and do things. That's, that's my sort of uh, story around that one. <laughs> I love that. That What a, what a great, uh, I think there's a great leadership lesson in there and so much of leadership leadership lessons or life lessons you could almost call this uh, life conversations because they they always overlap so much but the thing i love about that is who would have thought and this is the thing i love about this podcast when something gets brought up here it's because you've remembered it how many years ago is that like a, it's a long time ago that you were with your brother yeah. and your dad you know we're talking uh, you know that that'd be decades and yet you remember it and if and if you know parents right now think how can I make little Johnny's day special and you know what can I do for Sarah to really make it memorable it's like well if you want to listen to Kev Kevin's story it's go go down to the dump and go looking uh you know get, get knee deep in in some of the junk and see what you can find <laughs> that's not your typical go-to no, that's what no. I love about that story it's about the relationship yeah. and it's about who your dad is and it's about the relationship between you and and your brother and your dad that makes that moment so special for you. <laughs> my um um you know it's uh, garbage is my my life. I would tell the kids you know they they're all shock and awe was the uh, sort of you know capture uh, of the day. You know, I I went became I became a, a garbage man when I was in university over the summers because a it paid a lot of money. Uh, and uh, it was it was uh, a job that my friend at the time uh, you know coached me into getting, and he uh, gave me a good word. And I was I had my truck driver's license at the time. Was, oh, was that uh, I guess that'd be around your 18, 19, 19, 20 years old. Um, but you know, even there, <laughs> the, my my short history of garbage uh, in my life uh, is shaping me. There's an element to that. I'll leave it at that. But uh, it's very strange. But if you look at me today, and if you ask most of my friends, they would. They wouldn't connect garbage to me at all. They would say, you know, you're not even near garbage. You're, you wouldn't even touch anything, uh, let alone, uh, you know, exist in that uh, garbage bin. But it it is the the myth behind of a lot of uh, uh, pretense. You know, you assume someone to be like this, but deep down they have done X, Y, and Z. And that's, I think, I've had many experiences, thanks to my parents, thanks to my, uh, my family. And mm -hmm. those experiences just happen to be uh, literally around the world. So, um, yeah. yeah. From garbage to uh, what would be the context? I should write a book about it. Um, from garbage yeah, to just gotta find the right word. From garbage <laughs> to greatness, I like that. It's like from yeah. good to great, but uh, uh, <laughs> Kevin's take from instead of from good to great, from garbage to greatness. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, and looking at your sort of profile pic on as we're now recording on on uh, on Zoom, yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing about you that that shouts um, uh, garbage. So that's <laughs> but that's that's what I love. And and you know what, you know, it, it is. Um, it is actually quite profound 
because I think a lot of leaders out there listening, we make way too much of a, of a deal as, you know, as parents with, with uh, what, what our kids are doing um, and as leaders about how can I make every, everything, um, you know, I think sometimes we get caught up on the wrong things and, and re, you know, instead maybe just looking at things and myself included and going, how can I, how can I make this more fun? Actually, there's a great book by Greg McEwen. I don't know if you've come across any of his work, Essentialism and Effortless. It's sort of a two part, two books that they're, they're fantastic. They'd be my top five. Um, I've mentioned them before on the podcast, but in, in, in his book, Effortless, he talks about this idea of combining the things that have to get done that can be real, you know, nightmares. He uses the story as a parent of trying to get wrangling the, you know, the kids around to actually get the dishes done after dinner. And, and just saying, as an example, they, they decided to go, okay, this just, I like enough. I'm not going to go and go to another teenager and have to knock on their door and be like, I know you're doing your homework, but you didn't wash the dishes. It was your turn. So instead he turned it, they turned it into a karaoke night um, <laughs> over, over. So every time they put on some music, sing along and all wash the dishes together. And look, is it a bit Disney? Maybe. But um, th- what I like about that is the idea of taking something that in and of itself might be, um, might not have the shine, but, but choosing to find a way as a leader, as a parent, as a, as a friend, um, as a sibling to make it fun. And that's what I love about that story. You know, uh, I, 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 I don't know the book, but I can almost, uh, uh, I could almost tell you what it's about given what you just said. And uh, I will pick it up uh, the both of them. Uh, it's like the, the Mary Poppins guide to uh, success, you know, a spoonful of sugar and you can sing, sing your way through it. Uh, for 10 years in Seoul, South Korea, where I was uh, founding head of the, the Dwight School there, the, the, the thing that really, sparked my uh uh my my style i think was to take a task which was quite um quite significant in a country you didn't speak the language and to uh, have a startup business and a young uh, ceo of types there um but to make every aspect of the journey interesting or engaging for the team that you're with and to get them to be uh, you know tied into that because they found it fun uh, if you're doing something in life that is not rewarding, um, you know, doing the dishes is terrible, but, you know, singing karaoke is rewarding. Uh, people will, uh, they will join in, they will uh, lend a hand, but they will also um, want to do it better and uh, will take it further afterwards. I think that's a really good uh, connection you had. I like the, uh, what was the name of the uh, author, Greg? Greg, uh, Greg, Mc- Greg McEwen, McEwen, or uh, it's, McEwen. it's okay. spelt M-C-K-E-O-W-N. Uh, so I may be, as I, Good. as I said to you before we press record, I may be Australianizing it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that's how I pronounce it. I think he's an, he's uh, originally from London. Uh, so he's okay. actually, um, yeah, originally from the yeah. UK. Yeah. Wonderful okay. books, yeah. Essentialism and Effortless, uh, two just absolute, uh, the sort of books where I re- I've reread them. And then I've, I've actually, I think, I, I think I shared this on the podcast before, but it's so good. I've got to say it again. I went through the... I listen on audio books more than reading uh, sort of paper books. And I was listening and he gives this summary at the end of effortless. Here's a summary again of the whole book. And he goes point by point. And I, and I got out, you know, note paper and pen and I started writing notes. I don't know if you've ever done this when the content's so good. I realized I was just, I was just writing it down. I wasn't writing notes. <laughs> I was writing every word and rewinding. And I thought I should just get the actual book. So I've got it written down. <laughs> uh, but that's how good it is. The, the thoughts in there, um yeah uh, are really that, really fantastic you know that there it is i do that as well um uh if i'm reading something and it's really good i will either you know i'll stop what i'm doing i'll write it down i'll try and find uh somewhere to uh to to make a uh, note of it later on but yeah i i do that constantly and it's uh, you know i even tell my uh my children you know uh, you know i've my uh, the things that uh, i remember from the idea of quotes and all of that, uh, I try to tell them uh, in context so they will, uh, you know, uh, register and it will form a, uh, a memory in their minds of, of being significant for some reason. But the, yes. uh, the you know, the, the the writing it down. That's why I think that's why the tangible um, uh, textbook or uh, novel is so good because it's there in your hands. Uh, the uh, the electronic version of things, it, it's just harder to do that. For that's just me in terms of time and uh, and uh, and space, but 
Uh, I, I do that as well, Joe. I just wanted to say that writing it out and putting it down on paper somewhere and um, copying out something that uh, you'll use later on in a different context. It, it, that's that's what uh, that's what uh, I think connections is all about. You know, you found something that you have connected to, and you're going to pass that on from something that's truly interesting. Yeah, I, I agree, um, and it definitely helps. I think this is this is uh, just so much fun chatting with you. I think what I'd love to do is is invite you back for uh, part two and maybe a part three at some point as well. But um, it'd be great to, to hear some more stories because I could ask a couple of quick questions now, but I really love uh, chatting yeah. with you and, and maybe hear some more stories about your time founding schools. Um, maybe that could be our part two more of sort of today's more um, <laughs> today's yeah. episode well, is from garbage to greatness. To be, yeah. That's <laughs> really what I'm doing is, you know, starting <laughs> schools around the world that that, you know, that we can do in half an hour. Um, sure. That's not a problem. Um, we'll do that. We'll uh, do that another absolutely. time. Yeah. So everyone look out for part two. By the time people are listening okay. to this, it might be out, but that'll be a lot of fun. But no, today's been, I love what, uh, where, where today's conversation has gone. And that's what I said to you before we, we, uh, we clicked record is I love the hearing someone's story and then you just chat and, and it goes in such interesting places. Um, but I want to finish with leadership express and just ask you a bunch of questions. Are you ready? Sure. Yep. Okay. So the first one is what's a book that you've gifted to other people? Uh, well, it, there is, uh, there are several, <laughs> but yep. uh, the one that sticks out is, uh, and I'll pass this on to you. I don't know if you've read it, but Eric Fromm uh, uh, with two M's, F-R-O-M-M, uh, uh, great philosopher, humanitarian, um, but his his book, The Sane Society, S-A-N-E, Sane mm. Society, right? Yeah. Um, I pass that on. Oh, I've given it to my children. I give it often at uh, graduation to, uh, you know, you're not supposed to say which one's your favorite, but I sometimes do. <laughs> <laughs> there's somebody that's connected on a, on a, on a literary in a literary way or there's something truly uh interesting about uh, a graduate i might pass one of these uh, uh, this text on but anyways this one uh, rings important and uh, on so many levels but um on the issue of having and being okay two words uh, two you know two words that uh, taken separately mean things but together you know can uh, can really have a uh, sort of a philosoph philosophical stance on where you are as a human at different times in your journey. But, uh, you know, he talks about uh, the simple uh, two flowers. Uh, simply one is picking it and taking it out of the ground roots and all uh, that, you know, very much about our having part of our world and uh, the things about uh, taking and um, our material possessions. And then that, that being, observing the flower, looking at the flower against, you know, a crannied rock in this case, and the beauty that is a, uh, uh, and the uh, the life support that uh, just hanging on as this flower blooms amidst this uh, this very arid uh, background and uh, uh, condition, you know the the way you look at life and the way you are and act as a human. This book had a tremendous impact on me as an educator, but also as a uh, as a as a human. Um, and it's it's one that I would share with uh, with your listeners uh, if I had to pick one. That is a wonderful recommendation and I haven't read it and I'll add it to my list because it, it sounds, I, I love uh, asking that question as well because you get so yeah. many different uh, recommendations and I, I just love that because it's obviously had a big impact on you, like you said. Uh, okay. Next question. Any great podcasts you're listening to, or at the moment, it might be books, uh, anything else that you're reading or watching or just really enjoying listening to at the moment? Well, uh, I have to say, uh, this is my first podcast. Uh, I've never done one before. So uh, congratulations, uh, you picked me up and uh, I, I enthusiastically got involved because I'm interested <laughs> in it. But if I am listening on the radio or the, you know, on to uh, the, the Spotify, whatever it is that have these, um, Peter Zayn uh, is a think tank out of the US who I don't know uh, what he stands for really politically, but a very interesting individual on the context of geopolitical uh, geopolitical awareness and understanding of the world in the context of population density and um, uh, GDP and the current events that we see today on the continent of Europe. Uh, and he is very easy to portray uh, uh, the way things are and how they're going to be, uh, uh, you know, in the future uh, from the uh, the point of view of the economy, the history, uh, and also the the, the people of uh, various nations, and he does this without mm, without bias, I think. But there's uh, a different context to what you see regularly on CNN or BBC, and 
I, I find him very interesting. Uh, Peter Zayn uh, is a, I don't know what if he has the title or anything. I think he's a, he's an academic, um, but he does do podcasts. And then whatever the version of a podcast is with a video that goes out, is that YouTube something? I don't know, but um, there's those as well. But he, that's the only one that I, uh, I think I can happily share with, uh, with, the, with your listeners. And what was his name again? Peter Zayn. Uh, Peter Zayn. Wonderful. Zayn. Okay. Just, uh, I think it's correct in terms of the uh, name, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the gentleman. Um, uh, Zay, uh, Zian, Z E I H A N. Yeah. Z E I H A N. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. What's a recent leadership lesson you've learned for the first time or been reminded of? Ah, oh, now there's there's a good one. So, um, <laughs> you know. Uh, we we've all gone to school. I think uh, we've gone to university. <clears throat> we may have had a uh, a second or third degree uh, out of a uh, tertiary degree out of uh, university. Uh, whatever is written in a textbook, whatever is uh, told to you by uh, the most intelligent person, uh, nothing prepares you for life more than your ability to connect with people and your experiences uh, along that way. And I think that that is probably the safest answer. Um, I think that the, uh, uh, that, you know, there's no I in team uh, quote. <clears throat> That's so true. Uh, uh, I really think that I'm good at creating teams, uh, uh, Jono. I, I, as, 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 uh, <laughs> as much as that uh, yeah. is, an, an overstatement of some some parts, uh, but a team I, I I really would see as something that after a few years can basically step in for one another. And when yeah. the team steps in and they have that relationship and they're able to perform and they do it selflessly, that is just so great to watch. And I love creating those teams, putting the diverse people together. But you know the the lessons of leadership. Um, yes, you have to have the knowledge. You have to have the uh, the awareness and the uh, uh, you know the uh, the the, uh, uh, the contexts uh, along the way. You know uh, what strategy you're using, which uh, which uh, method. But um, to get something done and to make your mark uh, uh, in my field, at least uh, working globally, is to be able to work with teams and get teams to work with themselves so that they are successful for you. And that that is my uh, sort of passing uh, comment on that one is that uh, sufficient that's that's uh, brilliantly said and yeah there's nothing there's, there's uh something that's completely overwhelming to an individual is you know can be can be overcome by a team i love the i love the sports quote that um you know talent wins games uh, mm -hmm. but teams win championships and, you know, I, I love that idea that we bring our talents together. Sure, might win a game or two, but when you really build a high performance, healthy team, you can truly win championships in whatever field you're in and really uh, see incredible vision come to life and actually achieve sustained excellence um, that yeah. people scratch their heads at and go, how did you do that? And I think so much of that does come down to the, exactly what you said, that team where yeah. you can step in for one another because you've become so, uh, you just work so well together. Yeah, I was uh, uh, just uh, absolutely right. Uh, as uh, I'm very uh, interested uh, in the connections that the two of us have made here, but I, I was, um, I rode for university, at varsity uh, at University of Toronto. And I was a stroke, which uh, for anyone who's a non-rower, that's the uh, that's the first oar that uh, next to the cox will set the pace, but also is um, uh, setting the the rhythm for the whole boat. Now that has a responsibility, but you know I'm nobody compared to the other seven in that heavy eight. And the uh, the thing is that if you want to see a team and make a comparison and sport, so the reason sport is so important is because actually sport forces you to become dependent on each other. And that is that is that's truly uh, uh, you know significant, and they do. There are a lot of uh, um, there are a lot of uh, examples where you know sport would lead uh, to uh, uh, great leaders uh, down the road. But that heavy eight or that uh, rowboat, um, as you're going through the uh, uh, the straits or the uh, the race, you know one small little hookup pickup uh, affects the entire boat, and it's everybody is watching each other in a way to to work together in the timing and the strategy. But you can't 
you can't row that boat with just seven people. You know, it's got to have eight. You know, if you have one missing or one doesn't yeah. show up, it's over. And uh, so that really taught me about how important it is uh, to to be a little bit selfless in the, what you do, but also to to raise up the uh, the things you do well to be able to be done well by others because you've taught them how to do it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's that's very well said. Okay, uh, I've got to ask this: a movie or TV show that really impacted you? <laughs> um, well, yeah. I, look, I, I like I like both. I like movies and I like TVs. Well, one of the things I brought back from South Korea was my kids were uh, were very happy. Was I brought back a, a, a Samsung uh, television? I think it's larger. It was bigger than my my first car. Um, anyways, this uh, this thing is. Um, uh, Seinfeld. I don't know if you know the series. It doesn't relate to everyone uh, because it's uh, very much a. a New I love York, Seinfeld. Uh, love yeah, Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know, my my WhatsApp photo is uh, is a Pez dispenser, and uh, um, <laughs> you know, if, you, if you if you know Seinfeld, you know the significance of that. That 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 episode was so funny, uh, and um, but uh, you know, it, it's funny in a sort of tragic way, or uh, for human. Uh, um, uh, comment on society, and that's why I like it because it's so real. Yet it's uh, it's so um, it's so real and funny, and it's also so real and tragically um, distasteful. Uh, you know, like on the other hand, the way we are with each other. So yeah. I think that captured <laughs> that captured to me because it was it was uh, yeah, I could relate to not only the the New York atmosphere, but the the whole uh, I think uh, yeah. humanity inhumanity aspect to uh, to that show. Um, movies though. Uh, yeah, there's there's several. I couldn't even begin to tell you which ones are more important or uh, had more of a significance. Um, the uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But I tend to like um, based on truth or historically connected movies that uh, have uh, uh, some form of uh, lesson to be learned, uh, that sort of thing in them. But uh, and great, uh, great yeah. uh, um, um, producers that uh, uh, you know make these things. Um, like I said, with the uh, the movie industry, we've we've had uh, several. Like Steven Spielberg um, has been up to uh, our farm. Um, just you know, the greatest props in Canada. Oh, my gosh, that's great. Uh, what would be the uh, uh, the the connection to uh, these uh, these terrific movie makers? Um, I'll, I'll I'll just say, uh, look. Here's one. Uh, John Choi. Uh, yeah. A Canadian Korean. A friend of mine. I didn't even know he was Korean in high school. Just in Canada, in Canada, we were all just, uh, we didn't know he wouldn't came from anywhere else. We were just there and kids, you know. But uh, because I worked in Korea and because I went back to John, he's now a, a successful film producer in uh, in Canada for um, uh, for movies. And uh, he created one that went to the uh, Toronto, uh, I think it was Toronto Film Festival, about the uh, Japanese tsunami. But there's a case where, you know, parts of uh, Japan that washed up on the shores of Canada after that tsunami and the stories of those parts of objects that were from boats or from houses and connecting them back to Japan, that that type of a movie really uh, brings me to uh, uh, to connecting to something in life. So I, I movies that do that. And John, he was ter- he did a terrific job. I think he's doing one now on K-pop. Uh, but uh, oh, it's, uh, really? it's those things that I uh, I'm fascinated about. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's brilliant. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, the, I, I, I agree. I love those sort of movies and I love the recommendation of, um, Seinfeld. I'm a big Seinfeld fan. <laughs> and, and the thing you realize it's so funny. And yet when you stand back, you go, wow, they are really sort of terrible people, aren't they? In terms of how they <laughs> yeah. treat everyone, but it's yeah. somehow so funny and light, but still, points at you know just some of the things about people and humanity where you just yeah. shake your head and go oh yeah. man i see a bit of that in and myself <laughs> and, it, and it is personal because some people can't relate to it at all or haven't heard of it and they just do not find it funny but you know those who do uh, have a connection to it somehow but yes it is the, you know those characters and the way they're put together in life are everywhere and uh you know it's just so funny yet oh my gosh we are tragic individuals on the other hand you know like it's so funny uh, I, I like the the show it was very creative and they did write to stop it when they did but uh, yeah they did they did yeah. didn't they? <laughs> there's some great actually uh for podcasts there for anyone new to podcasts there's some great jerry seinfeld podcasts uh he does one with tim ferris where uh i just found it so funny it was such jerry seinfeld comedy where he talks about um, I think Tim Ferriss is this guy, and you could see, you can hear, sorry, he's very 
like sort of nervous talking to such a, an amazing guy, but Jerry's so relaxed and Tim asks in all seriousness, something like, so, you know, what's, um, what do you think really helped you to be such a great comedian who could just, you know, consistently make people laugh. And, and Jerry says something, <laughs> something like, Oh, it's because I I'm so easily annoyed. He's like, I, that's the key. If you want to be a great comedians are very like anything, anything we see every problem. We're completely sensitive. We're too sensitive. And it's just, you know, it's a great, it's a great listen. If you like Seinfeld, check out Jerry Seinfeld on the Tim Ferriss show. Um, it's, it just cracked me up. And um, he also, he also said, uh, which I loved, you know, if he could just put two words on a billboard um, for, for everyone, what would he put up there? And he said, just work. And, and I loved that because someone who's so creative, but he said what really has led to his legacy has been just doing the hard work and just being consistently creating. Um, and that's, that's sort of one of his secrets, which I thought was, was really great coming from someone doing what he does. Yeah. Oh no. And uh, uh, something that's uh, true to life. Like um, I you know my kids are like, everyone's, uh, you know, they, they, they look at their parents and they, they wonder, but they're deep down there, you know, they're watching you and they, they, they're learning from you, but you know, yeah, I don't know if it's a, a condition of my success or my, uh, you know, leadership, but I, you know, they call me, um, you know, ADHD dad, like I'm all I'm in everything and doing all sorts of things at the same time. Um, <laughs> that aspect of it is, you know, keeping yourself busy, but I don't have time to sit down. I don't want to sit down. I want to get things done. And, you know, that, that, you know, get to work or do work or, you know, work. Um, it's, um, it's work for fun and do what uh, pleases you and uh, always be engaged. But I, you know, sitting around and being uh, comfortable uh, at times, but yeah, uh, remaining busy is, uh, is my sort of, uh, 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 you know, um, sort of forte or uh, claim to fame or um, what is it? I don't know what the word yeah. is, but just uh, can, uh, sort of uh, your, your uh, personality. Yeah. Character. <laughs> yeah. I love that. That's, <laughs> a, that's a great story. So last question if you were sitting down with a young leader and you could only give them one piece of leadership advice, what would you say? Um, uh, huh, uh, if I had to give a, uh, so a young person piece of news, uh, uh, yeah, uh, take, take things in their, in their stride. Uh, don't, uh, think that you have, that would be it. Uh, you know, don't think you have to know everything, you know, you don't have to have the answers, but, you can find them. You can certainly work with people to get to uh, to, uh, to to assistance or to uh, to a you know a goal. Um, but I think a lot of the arrogance in young leaders, and I don't want to uh, say that all young leaders are arrogant, is that they also think in today's days that they have to know everything, and we don't expect them to know everything. Um, yeah, it would be terrific if they could share and connect with others and find find a way through, you know, uh, because uh, even, you know, I don't, I'm sure you don't either, you know, I don't have the, uh, uh, the knowledge of everything in every context, but, you know, by, uh, by sharing and asking and, uh, and uh, renewing our uh, 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 methods, uh, we can uh, become better. So I think it's just, look, uh, do a good job, uh, love what you do, uh, but don't, think that you have to know everything. And it's also a good uh, teaching strategy or, you know, even uh, uh, leading strategies that yeah. you, you act um, with a lot of uh, things going on at the same time. You know, part is intuition, uh, what you think. Um, part might be from experiences. Uh, that's what I've done before. Uh, in the cultural context, uh, you know, in this setting, uh, they you know, definitely working culture, cross-culturally, um, you know, this yeah, and that's the thing about South Korea is uh, that experience working in Asia. My gosh, don't know. They get to an answer totally the opposite way that we do in North America <laughs> or in uh, Western. You know, they, yeah. this collectivized uh, version of uh, you know leadership there is. Wait a minute. Um, that leader doesn't make a decision in Asia in Korea until they talk to their team. Then the whole team makes that uh, decision going forward, wow. or the you know they represent. It's so good to see but so time consuming. Um, <laughs> it, it took forever to get a decision, but uh, and in North America, you make the decision right away, but it's, it's very um, quick, uh, often not considered. And as a result, I, that has actually taught, that's funny, it just came to me. That is the single uh, biggest issue in my life that has been a change on my style is that getting to yes is very different from the culture you come from. 
So I'd say to the young leader, it's it's basically to uh, to work with more uh, understanding of what others around you are thinking before you make that decision. So don't think you have to know everything is the uh, is the answer I'd give. Uh, but everything in the answer is around you. Yeah, that's wonderful advice. And and also, I I didn't really know that about um, uh, about the culture of leadership in in a place like Korea. So thank you for sharing that. And and I think um, oh, fascinating. We could, we oh, could definitely yeah. learn a lot from that. And uh, uh, so that's that's really interesting, yeah. and uh, I enjoy uh, hearing that. It's um, that that would be a good show. That individualist versus uh, collectivist uh, methods to uh, 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 setting goals and or leadership yes. in the context of uh, cross cultural understanding. Uh, it's amazing to watch. Yeah, yeah, that's something I've literally never thought about. Is the difference between those two things? So thank you for bringing that up. That's that's uh, that's really fascinating. Uh, for those who have really enjoyed this and might want to reach out and just uh, thank you for anything you've shared or connect with you on LinkedIn or any of those sort of places, uh, where, what's the best way for people to find you online? Kevin? Um, I think uh, LinkedIn is a, is a good one. Uh, so Kevin Skeo, um and uh, Brooks Education Group. Um, I think there's a lot, there's a lot of media out on this latest uh, school that I'm connected to in Kiev, uh, Ukraine. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, LinkedIn is probably the easiest. Uh, I think there's, uh, um, how else would I uh, be connected? I don't know. No one's ever asked me that question before. Um, <laughs> it would be, yeah, uh, that's the most uh, Facebook, but uh, I think you have to be a friend for that. So it's, it would be LinkedIn, I would say. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. And uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn's usually the best, uh, yeah. uh, the best way. So that's great. Uh, well, I want to thank our listeners for tuning in. Oh, this has been just such a great episode. One of my favorites. Uh, I love the journey we've been on. And I know there'll be people uh, smiling in in their commute in the train or, or in the car or on a run, listening to to Kevin tell these stories and and feeling so. <laughs> <laughs> feeling a bit more confident about um, what they're stepping into. It's it's yeah. been a joy uh, for our listeners. We also have the John O'White Leadership Podcast, which is more. It's just me, but I'm telling you things like how to cast vision and build high performance teams and leadership question of the day where I put a stone in your shoe and ask you a different question every day. But I want to finish uh, today's episode by saying a massive thank you uh, to Kevin for coming on and sharing so much about your family, uh, which I just absolutely loved. And I think, um, I think the leadership lessons from the story, like I, I still can't get over that story of looking through the garbage, uh, look at, you know, and, and through the junk up to your knees and, and how that's so memorable for you and how you came across these books that now sit in pride of place in, uh, you know, in a, in a, you know, historic sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, part of Canada in, in terms of showcasing the history of Canada, that just, that story is so rich. My brain can't even get around it right now. That, that was one of the highlights. Um, mm -hmm. You've just been a joy to, to chat to today. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you very much. Uh, I will make a, I'll put a shout out to you on LinkedIn and also uh, make a, a connection to, uh, to the show and also what you're doing uh, uh, in my, uh, in my circles. Uh, I'd just like to say that if you were with me here at the home, uh, you know, you walking around would have a great, uh, uh, a great uh, 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 um, uh, joy seeing and me connecting to all these pieces that I have in my home. The kids who am I say, you know, this is, this is your, uh, your inheritance. You know, they're rolling their eyes and going, we don't want it. But, you know, there are so many things that make connections to you. And I, I have them, you know, and I have that aspect of the having part. But, you know, being around the world, I just want to say thank you very much. Uh, the, 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 the issue of uh, connecting to people during this time, during this pandemic, uh, is, is probably the greatest challenge that has come in recent years to our, the, the whole world. And uh, here we are again, there's radio, podcasts, uh, people talking and listening. We've had more time for that. So there is some, some positive that's come out of this, uh, this terrible uh, pandemic. And uh, I just want to say thank you, Jono. I would never have met you otherwise, okay? That's right. I agree. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Leadership Conversations podcast as much as I did. If you're joining us for the first time, don't forget to check out consultclarity.org. That's our website, consultclarity.org. We have so many free resources on there, including our seven questions on leadership series. 
We've had more than 1,500 leaders from all over the world in all different roles, in different industries, answer these seven questions on leadership and leaders give these in-depth answers around how they spend their time, uh, a book that's been significant for them. It's just a gold mine. It's completely free to access. So go to consultclarity.org and look for that. We'd also love to interview you about your leadership. I believe your experience, your life, your context means that you have advice on leadership that other leaders can learn from. Yes, you, if you're going, not me. Well, no, I really believe you would have something to add. So if you're looking for a way to give back, it's completely free to get involved. And we would love to interview you through the seven questions on leadership. You just go to consultclarity.org forward slash seven dash questions dash interest or Google consultclarity.org seven questions interest and fill out the form and get involved. We have a free resource on our website called the Leadership Survival Guide. It's a 57 page ebook, 10 world-class leaders giving their thoughts on leadership and that's completely free. It's available on our homepage consultclarity.org right at the top. So make sure you go and get that and download it today. And we have a free daily email that you can subscribe to. We send this out to over 15,000 leaders from around the world. And uh, it contains the highlights of content from our podcasts, our blogs, um, our books, books we're reading. It's got the best content and it gives you exclusive, limited early access to our masterclasses, workshops, new products, special offers. It's all for our subscribers. You can go to consultclarity.org forward slash subscribe and join 15,000 other leaders. And you know, my gift to you is to work really hard, particularly through the Leadership Conversations podcast. I have been blown away by the quality of the leaders and I'm learning as much as anyone in doing these interviews. So I, I'm having a great time. And my gift to you is to keep lining up the best leaders I can to invest in your leadership. Your gift to me, if you're finding this helpful, there is something that you could do that would help us out massively. And that is to write a review and to leave a rating for our podcast or wherever you're watching or listening to this. I can't tell you how much that helps us out. Also subscribe or follow. It really does make a difference in helping us to help more leaders become everything they're meant to be. Another thing that means a lot to me personally is when I see our community share our content. So if you do share this or any other piece of content on social media, then thank you and, and please do that. And look for me, John O'White, or Clarity and tag us in your post. Our team is always looking for posts to engage with from our community. And there's also a chance that we'll share your content uh, to go beyond and share it with our followers. Last of all, you can check out my book. It's called Step Up or Step Out, How to Deal with Difficult People Even If You Hate Conflict. I wrote this book because 50% of the coaching sessions I have with leaders, this topic comes up again and again and again. And it's this idea of how do I have this difficult conversation? How do I lead this person better when I'm finding them difficult? Or in some cases you look and you say, I think I might be leading a difficult person. They're just quite difficult to lead or I'm finding them quite difficult to lead. So there's a three-step process that I unpack in step up or step out. And the amazing thing, and I've literally done this myself and I've heard it anecdotally from other leaders as I've coached them, is that if you follow this process, you will see that person step up and change their behavior or make a decision, which is to step out some of the time. 95% uh, of the time, people will step up or step out in just four weeks. And I stand by that. It's uh, You have to read the book to understand, but uh, I really do believe in it and I've experienced it firsthand. It works. So you can go to Amazon, look up Step Up or Step Out John O. White or store.consultclarity.org forward slash book. Well, thank you so much for listening. We're going to be back with a new episode next time of the Leadership Conversations podcast. And I hope today has helped you to take another step towards becoming the leader you're meant to be. See you next time.